when we're on that double stop, the 12s on our second and third string, and then we kind of move it up to the 14s, you know, even though it seems we're out of that pentatonic, we're actually touching on this, so that 14 on our, our second string in this, in that key is our sixth scale degree, which is not in, uh, which is not in the pentatonic, but it is used so heavily in like the shuffle. I mean, that's what, that's what the blues shuffle really is. It's kind of like our, our root and fifth sort of power chord and then our root and sixth. And then even it depends if it does that kind of shuffle or and brings it up to our flat seven, which then that flat seven is, is, is in the pentatonic. So it's like, it, yeah, it breaks the pentatonic, but it, it is, it is such an, uh, a huge part of, of the blues scale or the blues, the blues groove. So then if we bring that, when we brought that up to two fifteens, now we've got that 15 on the second string, which is our flat seven. So we're like back in our pentatonic. And then that 15 on the third string is actually our blues note. You know? So it was just like a really interesting way to, 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 to pull those out. What I like to start doing, there's, there's, there's a couple tricks that I want to get into. And that, that's actually one of them, is using that sort of... It's kind of, kind of an idea over the four chord. Of, and it works, it does work over the one, because like we were kind of saying, the one does touch on that six a little bit. The sixth degree is the third chord degree of our four chord, right? Once we switch to our four chord. So that's the one, like if you were, if you were to play like that A7, the typical like A7, you know, you'll see where your pinky is, is that four, that 14th fret, you know? Uh, so, so that's one thing that, that I like to bring out for the four chord. And then there's one other thing that he does on the five chord. Uh, two things is every now and then he'll do like a, and he'll hit the 14th fret on the, on the, on that bottom string breaks the pentatonic, but it fits so well over that five chord. Right? So we've got like a 14 on the bottom string for our five chord, a 14 on our second string for the four chord, you know? And then even, even adding in, if we wanted to give ourselves something like for that one chord, giving us something that's only, uh, only suitable for the one chord or only really fits over the one chord is like, yeah, that, that note, which I think we, we had done that before, right? Yeah. So, so those, yeah, those, those few notes and, 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 and using these, using those, those notes to kind of spark each one of those changes is awesome. Now there's, there's two things that can happen. It does break away. It's, it, I almost consider the pentatonic is sort of like, like this backbone, um, almost like a, like, it's almost like a stone structure, right? It's almost like when you, when you get, um, when, whenever I hear players like Slash, you know, where his whole sweet child of mine solo is like melodic and playing over the changes. So, you know, he's got a pretty good knowledge of, of what he's playing melodically, but when it's the right rock solo, it's all pentatonic. Cause it's like, it's just that, that sort of hard edge structure. When you start like, like. Now it starts to get a little, a little softer, right? That's almost like those are sort of like decorative notes, you know what I mean? Rather than that, that hard structure. So, so figuring out with our ear, how we want to use, you know, do we want to be tapping into those notes every time? You know what I mean? Do we want to um, only use them? not just over the appropriate chord, but not on every single one of those chord changes, you know? And uh, so I want to experiment a little bit with that. It, it, it is the same thing when we start getting into to modal playing. Like, have we, have we touched on any of the modes yet? Okay. So, and, and, and that's the same idea is 
when we have, we basically have three minor modes, three major modes. Uh, and then there's, there's sort of like this half diminished that, that we don't use very often. But when, when we have that, our minor pentatonic works over each one of those modes, right? And then there's like a couple of notes that we add that are a little different for each, each mode. And our major pentatonic works for each one of the major modes. And same deal, there's just a couple notes that, that we add two notes actually, two notes for, for, for each one of the scales that we add that are a little bit different. So that gives us this pentatonic that is just so, so solid. So now uh, if we are playing like that, like a blues solo, and we're really sticking to, you know, for a round, and we do come up to, That's really going to pull that chord out even more so than if we're, if we're sort of like always touching on it. And when we're, when we're getting into that, that idea of modal playing and, and the idea of this, and, and I want you to keep this in mind because I want to do, do some, some riffing around in it is just because those, those sort of like much more colorful tones are there, it doesn't mean that we have to use them every time, even in passing. And this is this is sort of the same thing when we when we do talk about like like modes is if if we were kind of playing a, a little bit of a different groove if I was using like the Dorian mode, a lot of students will get trapped into you know and even if they understand what note they're supposed to be hitting for the to to create the melody for each change you know like all right this is the four chord so i'm going to hit you know the six even if they get that the you don't have to hit those passing tones or those color tones in each just because you're passing through it you know so it would be the same thing where if you're kind of riffing and you kind of hit that for the four chord, and that as you're on the four chord, you're still able to just go back to that pentatonic. You know what I mean? And not have to say, well, oh, well, I'm on the four chord, so I have to hit that note, you know, even though I don't want to land on it just because it's it's there, you know? Um, and that, that pentatonic becomes not just a safety, but sort of like a rock. So um, let's do, Let's do a little bit of, of riffing around in that. One one last thing. I don't think it was in the solo that we did, but I want to show you a trick that uh, that a lot of these players do. Is if you if you come down here to the to the um, bottom two strings, you know, and if you're kind of doing like that that riff that we did, where where we're kind of doing like a, the double stop, so on the the first and second string on twelve, and you're kind of doing a fourteen. And it's like 14 and then those two strings, 14 on the third string, I'm sorry. Those two. And then like a 15 on the second string. So it's like you could do like, um, think about like, it'd be like 14 and then only those two twos. So like, or only those two twelves. So you're kind of doing like you're you're alternating 14 on the third string, 15 on the second string, 15 on the bottom string. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, just like that. Yeah, it's super it's super super common. And that that lead up, there's one little trick that does happen. And if you check check this out, so now if you're on that 12 on that second string, you're kind of like down, you're just down there riffing, and that's a that's a popular one. Is doing like a 12, 15, and actually doing a 12, 13, 14. So it's like on on the I'm sorry, on the bottom string. So 12, 15 on the second string. And then a 12, 13, 14 on the bottom string. What that is, yeah, there you go. You'll hear that, you'll actually hear that a little bit more in, in some of the live Stevie Ray stuff. What what that is, is a real it, it really breaks that pentatonic, especially that 13 right there. 
just because like it's a half step above our root note that we've been like kind of hammering away at. It works almost only on the five chord. And what you're actually doing is playing the blues scale starting on that that note on that B, which is our five chord. So it's you've almost completely changed the key over to a blue scale in B for just that short period of time when you're on that five chord. So it's sort of like a and you'll hear like you know, it's just it's like such a such a quick passer passer through, but some really great ways to bring some of those five chord um, spots to life. So let's try a little bit of it. Um, if you can find a, like one major way I, that I always like to describe it, because it, it, it's like the biggest problem when when I get like a new student online, um, especially like a like a proficient student you know someone that's been learning a lot of, of guitar solos and they'll come and we'll kind of like do that same same thing like a like a blues jam and it is a lot of that like and then they're just like i don't know what to do i have no idea what's going on and one one really great way to to to, to think about it is playing playing off of what you just played so you're continually playing off of what you just played, right? And and you, I can hear that in your playing. What's really great is the um, the players that are learning guitar solos, but but listening to them in a different way, not just like listening to those notes to make sure that they match up to the notes that they're playing, but there, there's sort of a why in there. Um, and and using a call and response is always great. I think because we had done the call and response before. Right. So this, this is like an extension. You're sort of doing a call and response. You're, you're always playing off of what you just did before, which is, which is great. Rhythmically is always great. I mean, I think we had done the exercise where you just do like an absolute repeat, right? I think we were doing like, like if you were doing like, and then the same exact thing, just trying to match like up exactly what you're doing yeah it just gets it just gets easier to 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 feel the redundancy of of a perfect matchup where it's just like okay now i really got to get out of this because like i just played the same thing so much what's great about where where you're playing right now is when we talk about that idea of 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 playing off of what you just said essentially like like kind of like as you're telling a story is that could mean a complete change, right? And so what I mean by that is if, if we're kind of like, we're kind of like feeding into the, to a rhythm, we're kind of feeding into a, to a pretty, um, whether like, let's just take like something that's like a little bit faster, eighth notes. Eighth notes are just so easy, especially like with that, with that swung feel of a blues, we're, we're really feeding into that. Or 16th notes, I guess. One way to now say like, all right, I just said a whole bunch of 16th notes. Let me really vary it up now. Right? And now that starts to, to, to take what you've done and now you're pulling it back into something that's a little bit more of like a whole note, a little bit of a longer phrase, you know? So now we're dealing with, with consistent rhythm and when to cut it off and start something that's completely contrary to that, you know? Um, like, just like if you're telling a story, you know what I mean? If it's just like, you you don't want, you don't always want that listener when they're listening to your solo to know exactly where the end is, you know? You gotta give them, give them a little bit uh, to get into. So you've got those changes. Let's try some, some rhythmic variation. What I want you to do, the two, so the two things that I want you to focus on here, that it, it's one of the hardest to, it's one of, some, one of the hardest concepts to play. And the reason is because no one likes to do it, which is, which is using space. It's amazing. Like, it's amazing how people, it's almost like that dream you have, like, you know, where like, for some reason, you're just like sitting in the wrong classroom at school. And you're just like, wait, what, why am I here? Like, what's going like that, that, like, 
anxious like what's happening dream is like almost the same like i feel like guitar players get when they're like and they're like oh my god what am i doing what am i here what i gotta keep playing i gotta keep playing you know and it's like it has that same build up so i want to try to use that space and then and then seeing if we can not just because because you're at a place where like yeah you'd be able to change from to something like to going from one to the other let's see if we can make it cohesive so we're going to use like a little bit of space and then a little bit of rhythmic change as far as just longer notes you know sh those shorter notes and longer notes um and when we the the way that I want you to think about space is there's two major components of, of space is um, it's going to absolutely accentuate what you just played and then the next thing that you're about to play, you know, so so that space does start to, to have a little bit more importance than just if you took a solo and decided to do. you know, and just like cut a space in there is, is sort of thinking like, wait a minute, how can I end so that, that, that last thing kind of like really, really sticks out. Um, you know, if you did something like try, try this really quickly. Um, cause I, you, you have it like on the, on the 15th fret on the bottom of the string or, uh, or, and, or the 12th fret on the third string, that, that's the same note. So one great way to kind of end a phrase that that right before you're going to go into space is sort of this and you just give it like this bend but it's not a it's not a bend to get up to the next note you sort of sit on the note for a split second and then you violently bend it up but you cut it off almost before the note gets anywhere it's like And yeah, and that's it. And don't let it don't let it swoop back down again. You kind of like, oh, you just cut it off and you let it sit there. It's when we talk about those call and responses, that's a great call. That's a great response. If we really want to accentuate that call, give it a little bit more. Those sort of violent it's a very very violent bend just adds so much to that note there's a there's a lot of that if you hear um if you hear like jimmy page riffs when he when he sort of does those like there's on on like that three and that three you know there's a little bit he gives it just that little he, it's he sits he sits on it and then just before he gives it like a little bit of a bend and it's amazing how that adds so much to that to that riff rather than just doing you know and and you can almost not even not even really hear it so just a couple things to think about let's do let's do another couple of rounds with uh with some space and and call and response stuff like see very bond thing but it's it's almost like I mean, it's almost like if you're in an argument with somebody and you're like repeating that word over and over. If you just do, okay, but it's like, all right, now it's got a little bit more. What, how you took it there's so, now there's so much attached to that one note. You know what I mean? And that is such. That that's such an impactful way. Um, it's such an impactful way to play. I mean, those 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 guys that could come right out and 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 even rip a solo. You know, when when they're kind of like trading solos, like the Crossroads Festival will do that a lot. And there's just like one one guy when it's his turn is just like almost for like an entire twelve bar blues. You know, and if you can do it, and if it works, it makes such an impact. Um, you know, I remember when I was I was teaching at uh, I was teaching in, in, in an after school program at Compton, and for um, for whatever reason, it was just it was all it was all girls, which uh, all like I guess it was like high school level girls 
was just that wasn't the usual demographic for like our our after school program. So uh, they they wanted to get into like solo. They never played guitar before. You know, I think like at that point we had done like Happy Birthday. You know, um, and they were just like so eager. They thought it was just like so cool. So what we did was we started with just like you know, just those two notes. And it was like play two of them, play four of them. You know, you can play two in a row, two in a row, or back and forth, whatever. We're kind of like slowly developing these ideas, and then we added the the next four notes. And I said, you guys can play them in any order you want, however you want to play for this round. We just kind of like went went in rounds. Um, yeah, and one of the students, it was like her turn, and she just did, and that was it. Just one note. While everybody else wanted to to make sure that they played like all four of the notes that they had at hand, she just played one. And I remember thinking, oh man, if you were out at a blues jam, you know, like at some some jazz club in Philly, and it was like your turn to play, and that's all you did, while everybody else is like, you know, trying to jam all these notes in your solo, it it does it just has like that much more of an impact. So, dude, that was awesome. Um, Another another uh, addition that I, you're like right there, so I wanna I wanna really get this um, is is sort of having this A B A B phrase like like we did before, almost like that call and response. Now now because the way the twelve bar blues is set up is it, it's sort of set up as like an A B A B and then and then a third phrase. You know what I mean. Or, or you could almost think of it like a fifth and sixth phrase rather than just like how a normal song setup would be or just like like um, just sort of like a two chord progression jam would be set up. So then what we really get to is um, is sort of like an A phrase. Right. And then our B phrase and then, you know, do the do the same thing or something similar to that. And then really vary that up when you get to that five chord you know what i mean and that's that's like if you if you can think of it um as a as a vocalist you know what i mean and I, I, like i think we i think we had done that example where you know i had a a buddy of mine and we just do these lessons like on his porch and he was like so close and he it was cool that he was able to hear what what that 12 bar was doing um and all we did was like the, those lines of like, my dog has the blues, my wife doesn't care. My dog has the blues, my wife doesn't care, right? So now he's got something like words to attach it to. He wasn't singing, you know what I mean? But it was like words to, you know, my dog has the blues, my wife doesn't care. It was like his two phrases. And it was starting to work perfectly. So that just meant when we get to that five chord, we just created a whole different line that meant something completely different, you know? And then that's where, where, where you can really pull it. And that's also where that 14 on the bottom or that can really come in to kind of spark it. So, so let's just, as more of an exercise than just an improvisation, let's do another couple rounds and think like, all right, I'm gonna keep my A phrase super simple and my B phrase super simple. I'm gonna do A, B, a B again, and then I'm gonna kind of let it let it loose a little bit more on that five chord. You know what I mean, and see how that that variation happens. Let's let's try like one.